four of the Sapien creation types that must be coming along, and the end with the eye of I need to start giving Mark a big stick to get him a new, a new computer or a new internet connection. <laughs> oh, wait, we need to get a Patreon fund going or something. The poor guy has to wait so long after every click. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, internet. Well, I, th I thought originally, whenever we started doing this video series, that Saber uh, or Ice Ice Hedge Land, the Mark, uh, was just trolling us and just taking his time, being <laughs> methodical, but it actually might just be that his computer is being run by a hamster. <laughs> oh, don't listen to him, Timothy. I appreciate your efforts. There may be a Patreon coming soon. In the last video, I talked about how there was a lot of tournaments coming up and how I wouldn't make some of them. Turns out, a uh, family commitment that I believed, or was led to believe, is tomorrow is not until next month, so I will be able to go to Kilkenny. I'm not just saying that because a few killers have dropped out. Um, definitely some good players that won't be going tomorrow, but there's still some excellent players who are. So, still going to be a tough field. Uh, I'm never sure if, you know, you want a bigger field in that instance, because maybe you'll get a little bit of a lucky draw and people will start taking each other out and you'll be able to just sidle your way up. But either way, I mean, if you if you want to win, you probably have to come up against a couple of good opponents. So, yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. Uh, the downside of me not realizing that I could go to this tournament is that I didn't bring any decks down to Limerick with me. So I'm going to be borrowing them off a friend of mine, and it means that I don't get to do that last minute changing as well. I was of no idea where things stand at the moment, what people are playing. Didn't hear any reports from the Dublin tournament, so. People could be breaking out the deck list of the week, they could be breaking out their own mad stuff. Uh, I just don't know, so I'm gonna go with uh, the Jammy HB that I got a little comfortable with. I think it can do okay, even though it is a little poorer than I thought it would be. And uh, the Rumor Mill Andromeda that I played quite a while ago on the channel. Uh, I think it's a pretty solid deck against a variety of things, I hope. And I think if I can get the money up, then I can take on the likes of Industrial Dynamics and controlling the message, things like that, without having to tech too seriously. Do have a rumor mill in there, and same old things. So we'll see how it all goes. Um, but I am dependent on my friend having brought the decks, and also making legal decks and things like that. I would like to be able to slot in my own cards, you know, on a whim, but can't have it all. Uh, it'd just be nice to be able to go play some Netrunner, and compete. Also, it's a bit of a treat to have someone make your decks for you. Maybe I should do that in the future. That could be another tier in the Patreon. Alright, while well, I'm at NaveCon in Limerick, I've been at it once before where I also did a video, but this is where I'm going to collect decks and just play some board games and all that before the monster match is on. So hopefully a good day. It's been a stressful day so far, but you don't need to hear about that. And I'll probably pick things up either later tonight when I try and get some practice in, uh, flick through the decks, or tomorrow when I'm actually heading to Kilkenny. Should be good. On the bright side, I have Kit Kat Chunky Cookie Dough, which is utterly fantastic. Definitely get it. I mean, Kit Kat Chunky to start with is amazing. Cookie Dough, yes. Morning, guys. It is time to head to Kilkenny. It is absolutely awful out. It's milling down, which I'm not delighted about. A, because it's raining. B, because I have to hit, you know, rural Irish country roads, which is just unpleasant on a day like today. Uh, it's going to be a small tournament from the looks of it. I don't think the lads from the north are coming down, but... I like some Mark Walsh, uh, Owen from Cork. I yeah, know, I should use the surname at some point, it'd be easier. Um, and yeah, I'm sure there'll be another couple of handy players about. And the problem with the small tournament is you pretty much have to go undefeated, I think, to stand a chance of winning, and then you might have to rely on strength schedule as well, which unfortunately caught Oren out in the past. So, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I'm feeling pretty good about the decks that I'm bringing. I do have a Rebirth deck with me, and I don't have any other criminal IDs, so I'm going to have to run that by the lads there, and see how it goes. Uh, if they say no, maybe I'll just like flip a table and be like, I'm out of here, I can't play under these conditions. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, also playing the Jammy HB deck, which still runs poorer than I would like. A lot of games that I end on zero credits, but maybe that's the way to play Netrunner, the most efficient way you can play it. But it does mean that if I'm up against like Siphon decks, I could be in a tricky spot. Uh, looking forward to it anyway, but have to get this drive out of the way. Have to stop for petrol, even though I did that yesterday. I have to return to the scene of a crime, because I forgot my wallet yesterday. And it was just a case of, you know, I'll top up a little bit for city driving. Today I have to do a longer journey, so I have to go back. Do have my wallet with me today, though, so I'm learning. But that set off a variety of events that led me to be later than to Navecon that I would have liked. And, blah. but anyway, today's a brand new day. We're good to go. 
and we better go before, I don't know, Ireland ends up underwater or something. I didn't quite go to plan uh, back after the Kilkenny store championship, store tournament. Um, I'll do a full recap in a bit, probably tomorrow. I uh, just wanted to give initial thoughts. You know, it was a fun day out still. There was only six people there. But still a good field. You had Sean and Owen up from Cork, uh, Mark Walsh of Kilkenny and a newer player, Derek, uh, myself and Ken from Dublin. So still a strong enough field despite the, the low turnout. Uh, it was only when I was driving up that I was thinking about my decks and things like that because I had to borrow them all. Um, thank, thank you, Mike, for putting things together and for sorting me out with cards and everything. But unfortunately, I was short a sleeve to be able to just slot in a Desperado, which meant I had to choose between Rebirth and Desperado. And in the end, I went with Desperado. And now I seem to be accumulating a, quite the collection because I still have Rays from quite a long time ago. And now I have Owens as well. <laughs> So, if anyone wants to, you know, shore up their Corset collection, might have a Desperado or two going spare. So, I meant I had one influence going spare, which is never ideal. I would have preferred going to 46 cards as I, you know, as is tradition, but it wasn't to be. The six people turnout kind of caused some issues as well. Um, initially, I went in thinking I need to go unbeaten to come away with it. That probably still held true. Uh, but then we were told it would be four rounds of Swiss, and unfortunately, the tournament software kind of fell apart at the very, very end. Um, and just couldn't seem to pair up people. So unfortunately I missed my chance to, you know, go 2-0 and against Sean to boost up my record a little bit. Because that would have happened very, very easily. So no, not my greatest day out. I think I went 3-3 in the end. Uh, split the first game, I lost the second game, won the third game. Not quite the performance I'd hoped for. And after last night I'd been on Jinteki a little bit, even in the competitive lobby. Right? And had been getting on pretty well. So I was feeling somewhat good about coming into today. But wasn't to be and fell one place short of getting my hands on either the tokens or the Haley. so <sighs> next time. However, one of the plus points of the day is I am a champion in some ways, or at least a champion on a budget. I uh, picked myself up the World Championship decks, <laughs> Valencia and HP. Looking forward to playing that, looking forward to putting Queen's Gambit in all decks. <sighs> How did they get that so wrong? And Sean got a good dig in at me when I was buying them as well. Ah, a lot of bullying going on at the moment. And I thought the Netrunner community was supposed to be so nice. I need to hang up posters in this new apartment to uh, make the backdrop a little bit more interesting. But anyway, I was going through the editing and mentioned how I was going to talk about results in the next clip and talk about the matches. And then flicked around and I was like, oh, there's no next clip. This is really inconvenient. So instead, I'm just going to talk through it today. Um, not a huge recap. I mean, there's only three games anyway and not a lot to talk about, but I'll go through the games anyway. So, first game I was up against Derek, uh, played HB against Double Fork, and things started pretty well. I was happy with my general setup. I was getting out the thing, the pieces that I wanted, basically. And he was getting slowly set up, slowly but surely. And got a beta test out, got it scored, and fired it. Got two pieces of ice for free, which I put on to R&D. Thought my scoring server was okay. I think it was Fairchild 2.0, and maybe Turing. Um, but the blessing and the curse of playing a beta test and scoring it against Dumble Fork is you score it, you get three pieces of ice, you're thinking, great, puts me in a good spot. Unfortunately, it leaves them thinking, all right, this is exactly what I need to do to not only get through this server, but also destroy the entire thing. So sure enough, knives came out and started trashing bits and pieces of ice. Suddenly my remote server didn't look too secure when the likes of David came down. Uh, Faust was there and Derek was very willing to use clicks to get through things. Played very, very well, I have to say. Uh, medium came down then and yeah, I was in a tough spot. Uh, I put Turing on the R&D and couldn't find anything to put in front of it, which meant that he would run and just be able to click three times to go through and see like four or five cards. And in the end, the pressure told and uh, he snagged the winning agendas. He also got two really good picks from HQ, which is unfortunate, uh, put me in a rough spot. And it was very much a roller coaster of emotions throughout the game where at one point early on I thought mm, this is getting away from me because he was getting the, the picks from HQ. Then after the beta test I was like okay things are going better, things could go okay. And then later in the game I was like nope, nope, it's gone. So I don't know, maybe it was the mental side of the game that let me down. Um, but I had to dust it off and go to round two or the second half of the game. Uh, I was playing Andromeda, he was also playing HP. Uh, I think he was, more, he was doing a more standard kind of old school HB where you play your dance campaigns, your E campaigns, things like that. But he got incredibly flooded 
and the only ice he could find was Code Gates. Thankfully, I found my Gordian Blade quite early, so I was able to put Temujin on HQ and run just kind of as a, uh, we'll see what's there. Like, oh, an agenda, great. Uh, run, see what's there, get more money. Uh, agenda, great, brilliant. So that was unfortunately very, very quick, um, but I was able to seal the deal that way. Uh, round two, I was up against Owen. Um, I was in a decent position early, ran, got a future perfect, and managed to win the side game. But then he just started this uh, Tower of Ice servers all around the place. Uh, Sarugi coming back into fashion because he was expecting less wizard or less anarchy it seemed. Uh, or he just wanted to try it out. Um, I saw Ruhr Valley which I trashed, that was his key piece of tech against Rumor Mill. And he kept looking as he was like Resin Jackson's, he's like, hmm, maybe you are playing Rumor Mill. And yes, I did have one sitting somewhere in my deck, just couldn't find it. So yeah, things started well and then quickly got away from me. Suddenly things were costing a lot of money to get through. Crick on archives, of course, gonna cost a fortune. Uh, Sarugi and something else on R&D, I think, and HQ was like Tollbooth. Oh uh, no, it was Tollbooth on R&D, I should say, because I did emergency shut down at, at one point and then ran again to see if he would spend his last eight credits. Sure enough, he did, uh, but Owen's a very clever player. He knows how to leave him out. If you watch my videos, I often just like, oh, I got economy, just fire it off, yay, money, woo! Uh, but Owen was sitting there, he went down to three credits at one point, and uh, next turn, it was just like, celebrity gift, and we're back in the money. Your move. I was like, hmm, I see. Uh, myself and Mike had talked about what would I do if I came up against kind of a glacier build. And in my head, I'd be like, no, no, I would like Katie Jones. But as I said, I didn't have any cards with me, so that was unfortunately not going to happen. So Katie would have been nice here, because run-based economy can only get you so far. And when things are just shutting down all around you, yeah, it's going to be a bad time. On the corp side, I can't remember it all too well. Really should have re recorded this clip earlier in the week. Uh, he was playing Valencia, and I was trying to bait out black males, the same old thing, black males, and occasionally got it, but often it was a case of, oh, I'll just install this, I suppose, and take two credits, and just like, blackmail, score an agenda, blackmail, score an agenda. I'll put a cyber deck here, just take two credits, nothing. Come on. So it read me very, very well. Aside from uh, Cronus Project, I keep getting the two of them confused. Cronus Project, uh, the three-one agenda that removes their heap from the game. But I put it into the server, and I got way too antsy about it. I, you know, got full sure that he, at some point he would check it. But I probably fired it off too soon. I did get a paperclip, which was probably why I tried to score it out. So I hit the paperclip, but unfortunately, uh, I couldn't close it out from there. I couldn't take advantage of the fact that they didn't have a barrier breaker down, and. Yeah, just got away from me. Third game then was up against Ken from Dublin. Hadn't played him quite a while, uh, even in casual games, which was kind of sad. But he was playing HB, kind of a variant of the decklist of the week, which I only kind of realised after running HQ with a brainstorm suddenly raised in front of me. Thankfully, I had a fairy down. Uh, it was more of a, well, hopefully he doesn't raise Architect, but I was very glad to see that. I did manage to shut it down a few turns later and was able to put a lot of pressure on him, both R&D and HQ. Uh, it was a tight game, but I just about managed to sneak it anyway. And I think the emergency shutdown was very well timed. Uh, definitely gave him a tempo loss and worked well for me. I must get better at both the tournament results side of things and actually recording while out and about. Because I think we're all sick of this wall behind me. And then on the flip side, uh, he was playing Andromeda. And I was under a lot of pressure from the off. Um, he managed to get up to six points, I think. Got a sneak door, which was very well timed, and just like, picking agendas out of my hand, which is very upsetting. Timujin contract was making just tons and tons of money, and yeah, it was a really tough game. But it did get to a point where I had NAPD in hand, and I just decided I'd install it. And I think I had Vitruvius in hand as well at the time, plus a biotic. So I installed the NAPD and just took money, hoping that he'd get distracted by that, or you know, possibly he'd run HQ. He was only just getting his turning wheel at that point when the game was almost over, so very lucky on that side of things. Um, and I think he ran and whiffed on everything, and in the end I was able to just biotic out the NAPD. I could of course count Vit Vitruvius as well, so it was nice to have options, but I would have preferred not being in that situation. So overall, a fairly mediocre 3-3 record, and uh, the final standings were Owen, Sean, and then Ken. But it was good to get the games in. Uh, it's good to see new faces in the Netrunner community as well. But now we build to next month. I think there's two tournaments very early on in the month. Uh, Dublin and then Kilkenny, same weekend. 
I'm probably going to miss the Dublin one, but hopefully I can prepare better for Kilkenny. Actually have my decks and full decks with me this time around. And try getting some practice, all that kind of thing. Maybe actually know what people are playing this time around. It's always very difficult to tell in Ireland. But yeah, that's the next thing to look forward to. So, fingers crossed. Oh man, everyone's piling on now. Maybe the guys who give me so much hassle about my connection and my computer are actually onto something. I was playing against someone there who occasionally watches the videos, so hello if you're watching and thank you for the game. Connection suffered from time to time. And I'm actually in a different place, so I don't know what the internet was doing at the time. I ended up tethering my phone and then at some point that decided to kick the bucket as well. Um, but eventually managed to play out the game. Yeah, it's just it's irritating for me as much as anyone else because, you know, if you're putting time into a Netrunner video, you're thinking, okay, this is going to be a 20 to 25 minute game, hopefully. I mean, obviously it can go under or over that, but you kind of allocate that time. And if a game is terrible, that is annoying in its own right for many reasons, but also because the video becomes unusable. And if you also uh, lose connection in the middle of it, you know, that's a lot of time that you've just lost. But yeah, really annoying. Um, so Patreon coming soon. Uh, just on that point, because some people take most of what I say quite seriously, I don't mean half of it. Which half, though, is the question. Um, so yeah, I'm not looking for Patreon funding or anything like that. Um, and anything I say about like your viewer comments and things like that, usually in jest. But obviously I want to keep things quite lighthearted. Maybe I'm failing at that. Maybe I need to work on my tone and my delivery. Yeah, the comedic timing. It's all off. Hoping to get a bit of Netrunner recording in today, uh, including the second bad publicity video. Hopefully I do the intro properly this time around. I did an intro, which I put into my video editor, and recorded the game and thought, that was a really good game, I should just uh, slam it up, upload, done. And then realised I did not edit the intro at all. So it was up for two hours of me going, Hey bad publicity fans, this is Mark. <coughs> hey bad publicity fans, like, oh, I'm such an idiot. But it's re-uploaded and fixed, so hopefully I don't come across too stupidly. Happy Thursday everyone, you may or may not be able to see, but uh, I left half my face on the ground while trying to score a try last night at Tag Rugby. And I seem to cause your team to win the match, or a trophy at least. <coughs> anyway, we have new Escalation news. Uh, last weekend, Pichak did a stream, but they were able to leak two cards, or spoil two cards, not leak. But we had two new cards to find out about, uh, HB Operation, the name of which escapes me at the moment. Um, but it's going to make it much more dangerous to trash a paperclip or levy or important pieces like that because you can just play it, uh, name a card that's in the heap and remove all copies of that card from the heap from the game. That's a pretty big deal. It uh, means that you can't just special order, last click and discard your paperclip. It means that if you're chucking away siphons hoping, well, I can say them all thing at some point. Nope, not anymore. It's going to be removed from the game, which is it's an interesting one. It's going to make things a little more dangerous. It also makes some identities very dangerous. Uh, Corona's Protocol, for example, or even like Salem's Hospitality plays. There's going to be definitely some combination decks that are going to work really well. We also have Net Mercure. Mercure? Yep, pronouncing that terribly. Um, but it's an interesting little resource that when you spend a stealth credit, you get a credit on it, which then can be used for anything. And... Or you can draw a card. But the way it's worded, you can actually use it for itself, or it will trigger itself, which is an interesting little combination. Um, but stealth builds are definitely going to come back in vogue. We have smoke obviously coming out very, very soon as well, and stealth has always been pretty solid out of general shaper. Uh, never for me, but that could be just a downfall of shaper in general, as I discussed in the last vlog. And the other piece of exciting news about Escalation is we finally have a release date. So it's coming on October 6th, which means it'll be out in Ireland probably a week later. But it should be up in Jinteki a little bit before that because we might get some added spoilers and things like that, which means we'll finally get to play around with all the cards, we'll finally get to play the likes of Boom, which I'm quite excited about, and we'll also get to see if there is a proper counter to it in the pack. Um, I've been building a couple of decks with that in mind as well, of trying to counter it, because I expect it will be everywhere for a while. Um, but you still gotta watch out for other decks and make sure that you're not in harm's way from just fast advance or general glacier because you're so teched against one. So it's going to be interesting times ahead, I think. I've talked in the past about mini milestones and I think that's a good way to round out the video. Uh, the channel is almost at 200 subscribers. I'm still at that phase where every subscriber email that I get, I'm like, ooh, and then I see that I've lost one in the dashboard or something. Oh. 
Now, I'm sure there's a lot of people looking at it going 200 subs is nothing, and it got, okay, in the grand scheme of things, in Netrunner terms, it's pretty small. In general card game terms, like Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering, it's nothing. And of course, in YouTube in general, it is absolutely minuscule. But it's nice to see channel growing slowly over time. I certainly appreciate everyone that's coming along, watching the videos, supporting at all times. So, as always, I'll round out the vlog by saying, you know, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all the support. Definitely love seeing the messages on Jinteki.net from time to time where people are like, hey, I watch your stuff. Never grows old. And... That is it for this week, hope you all enjoyed. I'll be back very soon with another vlog, and of course, over the week on jinteki.net. Uh, let me know if you want to see any particular decks, if you have any suggestions for, I don't know, general videos, or whatever you want to see, let me know.